Alrighty, welcome back to The Weight Room. Thanks for tuning in again today. We're going to be talking to Julia from Live Health. This is going to be a really, really fascinating conversation about the the medical system and how, you know, it, it, it's not the best. I think we can all agree on that. We can all appreciate that it could be better in a lot of ways. You know, certainly this isn't this isn't just going to be a podcast about how bad it is. But we are going to be talking about how it could be better and how Live Health really helps, um, you know, helps optimize that experience. Um, so we're going to be talking about what Live Health is. We're going to be talking about, like I said, the medical system now and how it could kind of be better and, and, and things like that. We're going to be talking about nutrition and supplementation and fitness and how those things are all tied together to your health and and they should be a part of the medical conversation because. I think right now the medical conversation is is more about keeping people just on the verge basically of of not being completely sick. Um so we're going to be talking about all that stuff and more. Enjoy the episode and before we get started I just want to uh just want to ask you if you can subscribe wherever you're listening whether that be on YouTube or Apple Podcast or Spotify wherever it is. And then please leave a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts as well. That's really appreciated. So let's get into this one. I think you're really going to enjoy this conversation with Julia. Uh, We're going to start things off with her um, just introducing herself a little bit, telling us what she does, you know, who she is, her background, and, and that kind of thing. So here we go. I'm Julia. I am the lead integrative health concierge at Live Health. What that means is that I kind of work as the liaison between the patient and the physician. So I am their go-to point person for everything, questions, concerns. I'm the person that they work with on lifestyle interventions and nutrition, fitness, sleep, all of those good things. Um, and so I'm kind of the guide for every patient along their journey with us from point one all the way to the end of the journey whenever that may be and so i work directly with the patients on like i said everything from nutrition and sleep fitness exercise um so yeah that's, that's my role here and one thing i thought you that i thought you said was really interesting was the lifestyle kind of changes because i feel like you know so many times we go whether that be to kind of the doctor's office or go see a personal trainer or go see a you know registered dietitian whatever it is we get good advice and we may get, you know, a program and things and we, but, but so it's so hard to make those changes, actual real changes within our life. And just having somebody there to, to help guide you through it, I think is one of the most important things along any habit change. Yeah, absolutely. And just to add this in too, my background is in holistic uh, nutrition and as well as a certified functional medicine coach as well. And so the premise of those is that you kind of have like an accountability partner, um, somebody by your side, you know, the whole time cheering you on. And also we like to call the concierges at Live Health like to call ourselves an encyclopedia. You have questions, we have answers. If we don't know the answer, we get it for you. And so we're kind of like a lot of clients will message in and say, hey, I heard about this new peptide. Can you tell me everything you know about it? And so we're an accountability partner. We're your encyclopedia. And so, yeah, that accountability is huge when it comes to making those changes. It's cool. It sounds like, a, uh, you know, because the way I see it, I, I'll, I'll hear something about, you know, anything regarding health, fitness, diet. And the first thing I want to do is Google it. And it's so hard to find quality information unless you're really reading through research and, and that kind of thing. But it's cool to have somebody like you there to have been, you know, went through that already, to have, you know, background information and experience on those things already. Um, I think it's just a good way, you know, to kind of taking it back to like social media where there's so much information out there on social media and that's where people get so much of their information. But a lot of times it's it's just here and there and spotty on what's correct and what's, you know, good information. It's such a benefit to just expediting the kind of the trial and error process. Yeah. And, you know, to that point, it it is really time consuming for someone to kind of go through all the research and figure out what's legitimate, what's not with stuff on Instagram or social media as well. And so we 
that's kind of where we come in. It's like, okay, you don't need to spend all of that time because we live and breathe health, health optimization. This is what we do all day, every day. And so you can come to us and get the answers that you need and trust that we, you know, have the right information and the correct information, because again, this is what we do all day long. And so it kind of saves people a ton of time. Um, and the other thing that's cool is that, you know, people spend a lot of time and a lot of money on figuring out like what protocols are best for them when, when it comes to diet, when it comes to fitness, when it comes to just longevity and anti-aging. And we can cut that time in half just by our personalized programming um, and doing, you know, really specific labs and figuring out what you actually need and just literally just cut your time in half and, and for a lot less money because we have kind of everything in one place, whether, you know, a nutritionist, um, people that have backgrounds in biochemistry, neuroscience, biology, doctors that specialize in um, cellular medicine, functional medicine and regenerative medicine. So we're kind of like your one-stop shop for anti-aging and longevity and health optimization. So that's kind of a, a good general breakdown uh, of what it is and what what you kind of bring to the table but kind of dive into a little bit more about um about live health and and let's say you know i I, i'm interested in it and i I go to the website and i get a get a membership or and you know an annual plan what am i going to expect like how would that start and how that kind of play through yeah absolutely and i and i think to kind of start with the idea of Anyone that's watching this probably knows like our healthcare system is, is broken, right? We treat something when we're already feeling sick and when we already have a problem where we like to look at things from the perspective of preventative care and helping you live to however, 180 years old, you know, and not just that long, but also improving the quality of those years. So that's kind of the difference with, you know, live health is we're focused on taking a healthy person and making them healthier, right? And so we do human optimization and longevity. So when you come to us, typically what happens when you sign up for some kind of membership is you meet, you fill in a medical intake form with all of your history, what's going on, what supplements, medications you're on. Um, And then you meet with a health concierge. So someone like Marcel or my colleagues, And we kind of go through your medical intake form a little bit more in depth so that we can really understand who you are, where you've been, and where you want to go. I like to say that we practice goal-based medicine. So you tell us what your goals are, and we pave the path for you to get there. Once you meet with someone like myself or a colleague, a health concierge, we typically decide what labs are important for you to get. And we have access to order everything under the sun. So some people come in and they're like, I'm really interested in doing these labs. Or some people come in and they're like, I don't know what labs I need. So based on our conversation, we, uh, the health concierge typically will decide what labs we need drawn. So we'll typically make an appointment for our patients at their nearest lab for so that they go in, they get fasting labs, And as soon as those results come back, we schedule them in with their doctor. So a patient is paired with a health concierge and with a doctor. So we're like your own little performance team, if you will. And then they go through line by line each lab and what it means, where they're at, and how we can make that even better. So the regular healthcare system will say, oh, you know, everything's in range, you're good. But that range is based on the average American. And we know that the average American is not healthy. So I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to be compared to the average American. And also those ranges, it doesn't matter if you're 25 or if you're 85, you're being compared to the same numbers. And so we're going to look at your labs from a perspective of, are you not just in range, but and are you not just functioning, but are you where you need to be to be completely optimized, functioning at 100% so that you can be your very best and do all the things you love with gusto and energy and live a healthier, longer life? And so that's kind of the lens that we're looking at your labs. So we take your medical history, your goals, and your labs, and together we come up with a treatment protocol for you. So again, it's not just the labs, but it's also kind of what the patient tells us they're feeling, where they want to go, and kind of take all that info and come up with a protocol. 
And yeah, the thing you, you said about you know being average and using the numbers that the average American is going off of, it's so true. I think we don't realize that, though. A lot of people don't. It's like, okay, they go to the doctor and they get their, you know, quote unquote numbers back. And it's like, oh, you know, I'm, uh, this is, is in the, in a good percentile. And, and the doctor says, uh, maybe if I do a little bit more of this, that would be okay. But I really, you know, I'm doing good. But then you kind of, you know, you don't necessarily, you look in the mirror and you don't see what, what necessarily the doctor is saying is all good. You know, you, you, you don't sure. feel that either. Yeah. Sometimes we have people come in and they're like, you know, I've been to every doctor and everybody's saying that all my labs are in range, but I don't feel a hundred percent. And so that's why I'm here. So we do have people that come in. They're like, I'm feeling okay, but I know I could feel better. And I'm being told that everything's great. You know, so a good example would be, let's say we look at somebody's insulin level and we want that number in our world under 12 but under five is really ideal. But if you go to your doctor and you're at 10, they're going to say, oh, you know, you're fine. When in reality, ideal is going to be under five to prevent, you know, any insulin resistance from happening in the future. So again, that preventative care, um, you know, acting, you know, like you're a hundred percent where you want to be so that you're good to go for now and for the future. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, thinking about it from another angle, it's like, you know, if you went to, you know, a, a garage to get your car fixed and, and there was something, let's just say, uh, I'm not a car person, so I'm just going to use something very, very obvious. But, you know, th- let's just say your your glass was completely shattered, you know, all spider webbed out and and you could see there was an issue and they could see there was an issue, but they say, OK, the glass is still there, though. So, you know, you're, you're not going to get you know, you're not going to get hit by the wind and you might get a little wet, but that's not a big deal. Like it feels more like they're just waiting for something to happen, but until it does, they're just going to push you along, push you along. And, um, it's really more about, you know, how can we, or at least it feels more like, how can we get this person to on the verge of, of having some type of serious medical issue to where we can get them in here and, you know, get them for tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah, absolutely. Like just the other day, I was sitting in on a call with the doctor and the patient, and she literally said, you know, if another doctor was to look at this, they would say, you're fine. You're you're 100 percent good. And she said, we are nitpicking. And I think that's a good thing, because, again, it's that preventative medicine of like, this is OK, but it could be better, meaning you could feel even better than you feel now. And who wouldn't want to feel even better, even if you're feeling okay, right? And so it's that idea of how can we get you functioning at 100% so that you can optimize your years now and for later. And I love that she said, you know, we're nitpicking here because I think that really hones in on um, that preventative care. Yeah, I think as people, we have gotten so used to not feeling good and, and not taking our health seriously and almost just having this idea that, okay, At 40, this is supposed to happen. At 50, this is supposed to happen. At 60, this is supposed to happen. At 70, you know, if I'm lucky, I make it to 70. And if I'm really lucky, I make it to 80, and then I'm probably going to die. And then it's just, it's we have all these, like, preconceived notions of this is just, and it must be the human way because it happens to everybody, you know. But, But in reality, we do have so much more potential as humans and with our body and our brain that, you know, because of our, our habits, we're just not... We're not uh, accessing that for for a lot of people out there. Yeah, and I think that's a good point because a lot of times when, you know, before patients come to us, they go to the doctor, um, their doctor will say, oh, well, you're just aging. So that's normal. The thing is, is that it doesn't have to be normal. We make aging optional. And I love saying that because it's the truth. We really make the aging optional. You do not have to feel these signs and symptoms of aging if you start young at optimizing all of your biomarkers, right? So all of your labs and things like that. So yeah, aging can be optional, which is awesome. And and one other thing that you pointed out was the personalization of all this stuff and, and how it's like we can create something for you. And I think that's not a traditional idea. It's more like here's what your labs say. You get some general advice of like eat more whatever, eat less of this, you know, work, right. you know, be more active, um, you know, try to eliminate stress. But like 
what's the real things that we can be doing to to put ourselves on the healthier path? I think that's what people really want to know. Right. Yeah. Is that personalized customization protocol? And so, again, it, it truly is, because, like I said, we take medical history, we take how you're feeling and we take your goals and we take your labs and in we combine all of those things to come up with that personalized protocol. So, you know, we're not going to tell everybody, oh, you need to, you know, take Alka-Seltzer Gold, for example, which can be used to increase carbon dioxide levels. Um, We're going to tell people that if we see that that's something that they need um, based on their labs, right? And or their goals, because it's not, let's say their carbon dioxide is good in their labs, but their goals is to increase exercise performance and improve immunity, well, doing something like that will help that. So again, it's, it's goals, it's labs, it's where they've been um, and, and how they're currently feeling. Yeah, and I think one other thing about the traditional doctor going to the doctor and visiting that kind of way, it's like you, you don't get too much on, on the realm of like, it, it seems like it's very safe. What they say is it's very and it makes sense in a way. It's like you can't, you don't want to be pushing people into doing risky, you know, trying risky behaviors and, and, and trying new things that maybe don't don't have as much research. But it seems like in a way it's almost too far behind what the modern times and modern kind of ideas for health really are. And, and, and Yeah, I think, you know, what we know about people is that when they understand the science behind what's going on in their body and how things are going to affect their body, they're a lot more out to stick with something. So what, let's just take, you know, weight loss, for example, right? Cause I'm an expert in weight loss and metabolism. You go to the doctor and they say, okay, well, I need you to eat more, uh, sorry, eat less and exercise more. And the patient's like, yeah, okay, whatever. Right. But it's really hard to implement that when they don't understand why they're doing it right? Or how to do it. A lot of people just don't know. And so I think, you know, that old advice, while it holds true, yes, you need to burn more calories than you take in to lose fat. A lot of people just don't know how to do that and don't understand why they're doing it. So typically it just does not work. It is. It, it's such a, I think an important aspect of that visit and of, of, of health is just educating your patient, educating whoever it is, your client, it feels like there's not enough time in a traditional, you know, uh, doctor's visit to be like, let's have a real conversation. It's like, okay, we, we, do you have any questions? And if you're just not like, if you don't have those questions written down right in front of you, you're probably mm. a little bit too nervous. And then you, you don't remember what you had a question about, you know, the day before or whatever it is. But there, it seems like there's no conversation there. There's no trying to like, figure stuff out other than these numbers and this information that they kind of give you. And, and it seems more to me that, that just conversations and education will lead people to maybe be interested in at least, you know, getting more information um, through other sources and changing their habits. Yeah. I mean, traditional medicine, you see the doctor for 10 minutes, you know, they say everything looks good or, you know, your cholesterol doesn't look good, you know, cut back on, X, Y, and Z. And then the doctor doesn't think about you ever again until they see you the next time, you know, in a year or whatever it might be. And it's nothing against, you know, traditional doctors. They're needed for sure in in some sense. Um, But I think there's just not the education piece of like the latest and greatest, right? And that's something that Live Health specializes in is making sure that you're up to date on the latest and greatest tools in biohacking and anti-aging and longevity medicine. Um, And, you know, you get a lot of time we have, you know, um, unlimited access in our complete program to your health concierge, to your doctor. And so really you have as much time as you need with them. So that's kind of also a really enticing piece is, you know, I get all this time with my personalized performance team and can ask as many questions as I want and learn as much as I want. That's always our goal is to educate the patient, right. On what, why they're doing what they're doing, um, how it's going to be work in their body so that they really understand what's going on. Yeah, it's cool because it feels like a, just the average person can have almost like a a professional athlete's or a you know a celebrity's kind of uh, 
you know, team on their side. Yes, absolutely. Like I said, that personal performance team that you have on your side, just like a celebrity, just like an athlete, for example, like the father of biohacking, like Dave Asprey or, you know, Ben Greenfield, they have a team behind them of people introducing them to the latest and greatest, testing things out, looking at their labs, telling them what they need constantly, keeping track of their data. We do that in one place for our patients. And we have a patient portal that our patients can connect all of their wearables. So whether it's an aura ring or a whoop strap or they want to connect my fitness pal, they can upload all of their labs to their patient portal to see the trends over time of how things are going. And their personal performance team also has access to that to be able to track them, see how it's going, and then make changes as needed over time. So it is truly your personal performance team that's kind of really there for you throughout the whole time that you're with us, um, figuring out what you need for your goals and and your health and your uh, longevity. And is this something that is, that that could be a a lifetime kind of thing with somebody? Yeah, absolutely. We, we've been in business about two and a half years or so, and we still have patients that started with us on day one. Um, because a lot of people will say, okay, it's, it's a three month commitment, Um, what after the three months and I'll say, well, you're likely going to continue because you're going to feel so great that you're not going to want to stop, you know? And so that's the cool thing is, yeah, they can be with us as long as they want to be with us, you know, and be introduced to the newest stuff to see if it would benefit them. The wearables and the technology aspect that you can kind of connect it. You know, I think if it'd be really cool to have just everybody on some type of like automatic automatic dietary like uh, recording process to where they wouldn't have to necessarily like type it into their phone or scan it with a uh, you know a barcode or anything because I think that takes Mm -hmm. so much time and even somebody like me who is really committed to their health I I, I struggle with that I struggle to just find it and and that's it's part partially just a little bit of laziness to finding the time and I I talk about that a lot but like it it is especially for somebody who isn't as committed as I am I know they're they're not going to always make the time for that um, yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, I, you know, for people that geek out on this stuff and love numbers and, you know, uploading all of their information and having somebody like myself or my colleagues track it with them and say, oh, this looks great. We can optimize here. Let's pull back here is great. But for people that don't want to do that, that's also what we're here for. We have at least once one appointment a month with our patients, if not more. Our patients have access to text us on our HIPAA compliant text messaging line. So, you know, on those calls, when it comes to diet, for example, we can go through, okay, what do you typically eat? What are your goals? Let's make some tweaks, you know? Um, So they don't have to upload information. It's just for those people that, like myself, that like to kind of geek out on this stuff. (laughs) Yeah, and and for... um... It seems like this kind of thing would attract a lot of people who are really into their health and have and potentially have some like really large goals within their health and and potentially like myself would um even though I'm not a professional athlete or any type of like athlete I, I like to have some athletic goals along the way how would you handle though somebody somebody who has a a really quote unquote crazy goal you know asking for your advice asking uh for for some type of help with that goal even though it might be somewhat detrimental to their to their health. And, and I mean that in a way of like, you know, somebody who wants to run 100 miles when, when maybe the most they've ever ran is 10 miles, you know, they want to run 100 miles in, in six months. Like you want to help them achieve that goal, but you also have to get across this message that that might not be the best thing for you. So how do you handle that type of situation? Yeah. And so I just want to put it out there that none of this is medical advice. I am not the doctor. So, you know, prescriptions, things like that always come from the doctor. So not medical advice. But in terms of something like that, you know, I think it's great that people have these big goals, but we do need to handle it step by step by step. So we can't just go from running 10 miles to 100 miles, right? We have to make small little goals. And, you know, um, I have, like I said, a background in fat loss and metabolism. And so a lot of people will come and say, oh, I want to lose, you know, 50 pounds or whatever it might be. And we always, I'm like, we need to focus on one pound at a time. 
So same situation, somebody comes in, the most they've ever run is 10 and they have a goal of a hundred. It's like, okay, let's make the next goal, you know, 12 or 15 miles and create, curate a plan to help get you there. Right. And so it's the baby steps along the way. And if so, you know, same thing goes for any protocols that include things like small molecule drugs, prescriptive measures, uh, nootropic supplements. We're not just going to put somebody on a million things at one time. Let's start with the basics and then we can always add on to your stacks from there. But we never want to put somebody on like 20 different things, right? Because we want to see what's making a big difference, um, what's not necessary. And so it's always going to be baby steps. And you have that, that knowledge in weight loss that you're talking about. Do most people that come to you, are they people that have, you know, a, a an idea of like, hey, I want to lose weight or are most people, you know, already at a healthy weight and want to maintain weight and or like what's the kind of the average person really mm-hmm. coming to you for uh, just yeah, generally so- speaking? For sure. Uh, We have kind of across the board, but I would say average person does want to make body composition changes. Uh, We do have some clients that come in, they have larger fat loss goals, you know, 50 pounds, more than that. But I would say on average, we have people that come in, they say, I would like to lose a little fat and change my body composition, gain muscle mass, lose fat, that kind of goal. Gotcha. And, um, So how does, I think one of the biggest struggles is getting across, and it, it it really is, I think, one of the biggest struggles, but it's also a struggle on both ends, getting across the seriousness and the importance of, like, making these changes to actually get the goal at the end of the day that this person wants, and especially when you're not necessarily looking at somebody and, and, and you know, physically pushing that person, like, how how do you handle inspiring that person and you know getting them to make these these a lot of times challenging lifestyle changes i think there's two components to it one is and it might sound cliche but it's really knowing your why if there is not a strong enough reason behind behind why you want to accomplish that goal typically people are not going to stick with it so it's really important to understand when somebody tells me i want to lose fat because i want to look better and be healthier that's not enough. We need to dig deeper. That's not going to have somebody, you know, stick to their regimen, their protocol. So we need to dig deeper than that. And so normally I will do that. Secondly, I think I mentioned this, but it's important that somebody understands the science behind why they're doing what they're doing. So for example, if I have a patient, uh, we need to stabilize their blood sugar and we're going to do it through uh, nutrition why are we stabilizing your blood sugar and how is the regimen that we're going to implement doing that for you? How is it working in the body? And so I think it's those two components that really help people stay committed is when their why is really, really strong and when they understand the science behind why they're doing what they're doing. Yeah, I think the why, it's it's a conversation almost you know, that comes up almost every time I talk to somebody. It's like, if you can make somebody understand why it's important to them, because we, we really do get kind of bombarded with information on why it's important, um, whether it be for, you know, heart health or brain health or whatever else. It's it's so hard because of all those things or, or even like the body composition, like, you know, hey, you should be skinny or you should be whatever. Like, I think we sometimes try to, without even knowing you know, have our own why, but it's, it's the same why that has been kind of culturally put into us. You know, why do I want to lose weight? Well, because uh, you, you, you only have value if you're skinny or you only have value if you're, you know, muscular or, or kind of those kind of things that, that are so like you're kind of talking about really not truly that individual's purpose. You know, when it comes to fat loss specifically, I really rather focus on, performance goals rather than a number on the scale because typically what happens is somebody gets down to a number at the scale and they're still not satisfied and so typically those performance goals I think are more important so for example for someone it might be oh I want to run one mile right 
for another person, it might be, oh, I want to deadlift, you know, 400 pounds. I want to do, you know, 10 pull-ups, whatever it might be. Um, it could be, I want to walk a mile. It depends on where they're coming from. But those little uh, performance-based milestones even could be, I want to walk up two flights of stairs, you know, it just depends on where someone's coming from. But I think those are really more rewarding um, and more a, a better pro a measure of progress than a number on the scale, for sure. Because just being in this field for, I mean, I started working in the fat loss field in 2009. Um, and the number on the scale, it, typically people are just not satisfied when they see a certain number if it's not tied to anything. Yeah, and it, it is. I think so much of it's psychological more than it is like, you know, actually something they they want to see physically. I think a lot of this has has to start from a, a psychological perspective. You, you have to set these performance goals because I think that's whenever you start to build more confidence in yourself. You know, you're more comfortable within your body when you feel stronger, when you feel more capable. Um, and that's what you're seeing a lot of now, with especially with women who are, you know, lifting weights more. And you, and you see like that, that confidence level increase because they can... Um, you know, they, they see some muscle building and they see that they can, you know, lift weight. Heavy just, things. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's such a weird kind of thing that that is attractive, but just like being able to lift something heavy can just Absolutely. put so much confidence in you. Yeah, 100% agree. And that, like I said, that's, that's why I like the goals that are more, uh, you know, little, small goals that are more performance based rather than a number on the scale. Um, and so, you know, when it comes to fat loss in general, we have tons of tools to help people get there. In addition to, you know, nutrition and fitness, we, if somebody wants to, we do use a combination, you know, of small molecule drugs and uh, nootropic supplements, prescriptive options. And one thing I like to mention is like some people come in, they're like, you know, I don't, I've never wanted to use drugs or prescriptions or nootropics. I want to do this all by myself, but then they get to a point where they're stuck and I, there is no shame in getting help when you have a goal and you, you feel stuck or you need a little bit of help in reaching it. You know, um, I like to mention that cause I'm like, you know, some people do the diet, they do the fitness and they still feel like they're stuck in their goals. And that's where we can come in as well, right? Is tweak diet, tweak fitness, but also have these other tools um, like peptide therapy, like bioidentical hormones, like nootropics, you know, like, um, like I said, small molecule drugs that can really just help somebody out as well if they've been struggling with it for a while. Yeah, it seems like the world that we live in now is so consumed with a lot of pollution and, and our food is consumed with a lot of different chemicals and in the the clothes that we're wearing are you know bathed in these these chemicals and they're it's just we're 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 getting away from a, a such a natural way of living that our bodies just aren't used to it and it, it's causing so many different problems within our our bodies and within our brains that sure. it, it makes sense that now we need these things even more than ever to to put back into our bodies and and uh, you know I think we're in this really interesting time of humanity to where we went from, you know, so long living a natural, you know, quote unquote natural life with with just things that are naturally occurring and, and nothing else. And now we're kind of into more of that synthetic kind of uh, period of humanity and, and now kind of maybe even heading into more of a artificial kind of intelligent meets human health kind of uh, future. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see how human health and um, things uh, I can't remember what exactly it was, but but you're probably familiar with the uh, the little bots that were you know microscopic that that were putting in people's blood and like cleaning out plaque and like you know fixing DNA and all these things. I don't know if that's you know really quote unquote out yet, but just the, the that idea being out there and how that in the future will just completely change humanity in the same way that kind of this um, synthetic uh, era has. Yeah, it's quite interesting. Um, what we're seeing with more and more people is because of the world that we live in and all the things that we're exposed to in today's day and age, people are having lower and lower uh, hormones. So, you know, after the age of 25, 30, our hormones start dropping a little bit year after year after year. But because of the world that we live in, 
we're seeing, you know, guys and women in their 20s that have suboptimal testosterone, for example. And what's interesting, and this kind of goes back to what we talked about, about traditional medicine, is those ranges that we were talking about. The reason that it can be detrimental is doctors are saying, oh, well, the average American now has less testosterone at 25 or 30 than they did 10, 15 years ago. So we're just going to lower the range. So that's just a good example of, you know, the ranges, but also the fact, yeah, the world that we live in and how with all the plastics we're exposed to and there's, you know, estrogens that are in plastics and the air pollution and all of that stuff. Yeah, people are certainly having um, suboptimal hormone levels at an earlier age. So we are seeing a lot of that as well. Yeah, I think it's a scary kind of... uh... It's a scary transitional period, I think, to to be a young person in this era. It's like, what am I going to be in 30, 40, 50, 60 years because of all this stuff? Because it's it really is at the at the cusp of of a full lifetime of it. You know, I think it, it, it's only getting more and more of it. So I think is, is if we don't do anything about it, I don't think it's going to get better. But but it's just interesting. It's going to be interesting to see, you know, in sixty years, and and what these you know young people to today are going to have their health look like. Yeah, yeah, I think definitely. I think it'll be interesting to see, and I think if we continue going at this rate, it will probably just be you know a little bit worse, where we're seeing younger, 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 younger people having challenges with their health and wellness. You know. Um, and so getting in as early as you can, just see where your optimal levels are at. So in 15, 20 years, you test again and you're like, oh, wow, like that's dramatically changed. Let me do something about it to get back to where they were in my 20s, you know, at ideal levels. But that's the nice thing about <clears throat> Live Health is that, you know, we focus on everything from sexual wellness to cognition to digestion to immunity to body composition and so we can really look at where you're at um, and then you know where ideal would be for you but I always encourage even people at a young age are like oh I'm young I'm healthy I don't have any issues get your labs done where let's see where things are at because that's a good marker to have so that in the future you can say oh that's changed a lot. How do I get back there? And that's something that we can do is kind of reverse that aging. Yeah. I think that's one scary part is like, we're so resilient when we're younger that we don't feel worse when we act worse. And it's just like, if we could somehow, uh, you know, I guess, I guess getting those labs done is a great way to do it. But if we could somehow like have a, have a better intuition about our own body, it would, I think do us a lot of good seeing how, you know, going out and, and drinking three or four nights a week and, and not getting enough sleep and whatever else, you know, not moving enough and, and just eating eating poorly on a regular basis, how that does affect us today, but how it especially affects us, you know, down the line and, and not just not just being being the same person who who ends up having to catch up with their health instead of staying up to date with it. Yeah, I think you've probably heard the saying all the time. People are in their 30s are like, oh, I can't drink like I used to drink in my 20s. You know, I, I know it takes me a week to get back to my normal, you know, feeling normal. And so I think that's, you know, definitely a truth, too, is like, and that's what I was saying before about like optimize your years now to optimize your years later. Right. And so it's focusing on the now and what you can do now to not only expand your life, but enhance the quality of your years to come. Yeah. And, and you mentioned earlier, like that 25 to 30 range. And that's me. You know, I'm I'm 25 now, soon to be 26 here in about a month. And it, I don't think we truly understand the that that like, oh, man, moment of like and I don't feel older and I, I, I'm certainly not considered old, but like just the the fact that you are getting older, and I, and I don't think you feel that until you're in that starting position. You know, when you're when you're 13, 14, 15, in your teens, and and getting into your 20s, you don't understand the and, and probably most people not even when they're 25 to 30. But I think I'm just more conscious of it. But I almost feel like I'm like maybe 50, and in, in in the in the way of like. I want to, in so many ways, just be more cautious of 
of how I'm living. And, and I think it's so impossible to, to share that feeling with somebody who's not there yet. And I think that's one of the hardest things about um, trying to, to make somebody understand the importance of doing all this good stuff. Yeah, you really, I mean, you can't really force somebody to want to make changes and think about these things unless they really want to. So, but yeah, I think you're right in your 20s. Most people aren't thinking about their health and how it's going to be in their 40s and 50s, right? So um, I think that's just kind of the way our society is right now is people aren't really thinking about it until they start maybe not feeling great or, you know, oh, I should probably get checked out or something. But yeah, at a younger age or probably not thinking about how you're going to feel in in 20 years from now. And I think it all goes back to what can we do to change a young person's idea? Because it's hard to, to, I think it's harder to start at the, at the top of the, the age pyramid and work its way down. I think if we start younger, you know, teach kids in, in school, the importance of eating healthy and input healthy foods into the school and, teach them to, to uh, you know, take care of their bodies from a physical physical training aspect as well and getting them outside and not cutting PE. And, and I just think there's so much more we could be doing that we're not doing. And it, it almost feels like a, a huge conspiracy theory against, uh, against our health in a, in a lot of ways, the way society is set up. Yeah, no, I mean, I certainly agree. I don't remember being taught in grade school or high school or any of that, you know, about this kind of stuff. And so certainly it would be a great change to have it implemented at a younger age. You know, I mean, I just happen to be interested in it at a young age. So I'm going to be 35 tomorrow, but I was telling my fiance the other day, it's like, I do not feel 35. I feel 25, you know, and that that's kind of our goal is like, you know, for our clients that come in, it's like, feel 10 years younger, you know, look 10 years younger. Um, but yeah, I think certainly if it was implemented at an early age, people would be more cognizant and more aware of it, you know, as they, as they get older and implement things at an earlier time. But I will say that there's not, there, you're never too old. So we, I mean, we have clients kind of all ranging all different ages, but a family member of mine started with us recently and she's 70. Um, so it's never too late to, you know, start reverse aging and, and start optimizing all everything that you've got so that you can live longer and healthier, you know? So I don't, I want to put it out there that it's never too late. I mean, we can start wherever you're at and make you healthier, make you live longer, um, make you feel more energized, um, than you do right now. So one thing I really do appreciate about Live Health and what you guys offer is the, um, you know, those supplement recommendations and packs that you sell, and and talking about food and talking about nutri- uh talking about fitness, but especially from the aspect first of the supplements. Like, I I think that that's such an underutilized aspect, simply because they don't understand the 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 medical and the health side of supplements. All they hear about is you know, the gym bro side of supplements. And and I think mm-hmm. if we put more of the conversation out there about how this can really help and that there's real research being done by professionals and they don't get that conversation from a, a typical doctor, which is unfortunate. Yeah, I think there's a lot of uh, controversy, if you will, around supplementation. But um, just to give an example from the health side of things, what we do know is that running a vitamin D level, and again, not medical advice, but running a vitamin D level between, you know, 60 and 110 is really ideal for um, depression, for energy. Um, There was a recent study done that people that uh, with COVID, um, the people that had higher vitamin D levels either did not get sick, or if they did get sick, they had minimal, minimal um, symptoms. And so, you know, the importance of if you're not out in the sun 30 minutes a day, and even if you are, probably still optimizing with supplementation. And so that's kind of on the health side of things, right? So, you know, once in a while, we'll have a client that's like, you know, I feel really great, but sometimes I'm just really fatigued. And we see that maybe their vitamin D levels are low, maybe their B12 levels are low. And so the the importance of that and from a health perspective, I think, yeah, we definitely see supplements from the side of like, you know, gaining muscle and like creatine, which I love creatine, don't get me wrong, 
um, there's additional benefits rather than just muscle building, right? There's lots of um, for neuroprotective, for your brain health, um, you know, cognition, things like that. But yes, from the side of health and really figuring out what do I actually need for my own body through your labs as well is important because a lot of people will hear about a supplement and they'll just like start taking all these things. When we start taking way too many supplements, it's taxing on our liver. We don't know what's doing what. We don't know if we actually need it. So I think, again, that personalization of what do I actually need? What's going to help me feel my absolute best um, and making those recommendations? There's so many different supplements out there that people do kind of get overwhelmed by it. And, and when they do maybe decide, hey, I'm going to start taking these, it's like they, like you said, they do you know, take like 15 at one time. And it's like, oh, I don't know if this is... <laughs> if this is bad because the supplements are bad or bad because I just, you know, started doing all these things at one time, but there, there is, there's so much, um, there's so much research going into different supplements. And the tough thing is it's, it's, it's not like this supplement works from the, from the perspective of this supplement works for everybody. There's always going to be, this supplement may work for you. And then they try that supplement and it doesn't work. Then they kind of get down on supplements as a whole yeah, and I think that's a great point because so many people are like, oh, my best friend down the street did this diet and it really worked for her. So now I'm going to do it, right? Instead of figuring out what's going to work best for you. So, for example, the keto diet, right? I'm not for, against, nothing like that. It's just that for some people, it's not the best diet because too much saturated fat for some people actually can raise their, you know, their cholesterol. But for some people, it doesn't affect it at all. So it's really important to personalize these things because what works for one person isn't necessarily going to work for another. Um, and that's kind of imperative. Yeah, and I think that's where the personalization of uh, Lift Health comes into play so um, crucially. You know, it's such a cool thing that you guys are doing with uh, just making the the medical experience a more positive experience. I think people get really excited when they work with us because they, like I said, they come in and they have these goals and they know that we're going to um, pave the pathway for them to get there with the combination of the lifestyle interventions nootropics, pharmaceuticals, whatever it might be, we're going to get them to that goal, you know, from all different modalities. And usually it's a combination of we, um, we like to use the term meshing. So mindset, exercise, um, sleep, nutrition, immunity, gut health. Um, it's a combination of all of those things working together to help you be the absolute healthiest you can be and increase health span and longevity. So it, there's never one thing. It's a combination of all those different things. Yeah. And I think one, one term that most people would probably associate with that would be the holistic kind of approach to medicine instead yeah. of, uh, you know, just somebody working on your heart, somebody else working on your lungs, somebody else working on your foot, you know, trying to figure out how all these things work together because one does affect the other. Absolutely. Uh, we take a 360 degree view of your health and we take everything into consideration. And the cool thing is, like I mentioned before, is that we have experts in every category. So you don't need to go to a doctor for this, an expert for that, a specialist for that. You can get it all in one place with Live Health for a lot less time, a lot less money. And so that's what's really great and enticing about it and just see just as great results. Because nobody has time to go to 10 different doctors for all their different needs, you know, or 10 different specialists, nutritionists, personal trainer, you know, all the different things. I mean, we're really all a one-stop shop for all of that. I think it's so cool to have this one place to go to. And um, it, it's and, and then again, it makes it so easy, you know, from the uh, from the virtual side of things to to connect and to fit and to see your numbers again and to you know, have a conversation with somebody without having to drive and take time off work and do all this other stuff. It really makes it so much more accessible um, from that aspect. And, and another aspect that it makes it accessible that I think is great is like people who, who maybe live in, in a more rural area, they don't have access to these things, as, especially as easy, especially to, compared to somebody um, who lives in a bigger city. And um, I think it just makes it so much more accessible for more people. Yeah, definitely. We are nationwide. We're licensed in all states. 
And so it really is accessible to anywhere from anywhere. If, if you're on the go, if you're traveling, you can join, a, you know, a video call right from your phone if you're on the road. Um, it, so you can really be anywhere and, and still work with us, which I love that about it. Before we head out, I just want to um, I want to ask a few questions. I think a lot of people are, are kind of worrying about this topic recently and focusing on it. And that is something we talked about a little bit about with the immunity and the vitamin D. But what are some other things that are maybe supplements or habits that, that you recommend and that uh, you see working with, with clients that, that can help boost immunity? Yeah, for sure. So a couple of th- I mean, I'll just touch on it again, but definitely running, you know, again, I have to say it, not medical advice, um, but um, yeah, running our patients' vitamin D levels at optimal. I think in a regular panel, it'll, it'll be like 40 or 50 is in range, but it's not optimal. And so you, we really want to run those numbers, you know, 60 to 110 ish, again, depends on the person um, like doctor decides that, but running those levels, you know, higher for sure. Um, another thing, you know, for, for immunity, um, I like to look at, or the doctor likes to look at your CO2, your carbon dioxide levels in your labs. Um, typically when somebody is under 27 or so, we start to see that they're a little bit more like an acidic state which does not help immunity. So when you're in an acidic state, we want you to become a little bit more alkaline, um, which helps sports performance, but it also really helps immunity. Um, And so sometimes we'll implement, the doctor will implement things like um, Alka-Seltzer Gold, something like that, to help bring you into a more alkaline state. That can really be helpful as well. So those are two kind of little little biohacks, if you will, um, to help with your immunity. Again, not medical advice, but just something to be aware of. If, if someone does get their labs and they're looking at them with their doctor, they can say to their doctor, oh, I heard this. You know, what do you think about this? That type of thing. Um, but those are two little hacks that we that we like to look at. I think it is good advice to, like, get outside because it does help your mental state. It does get you some vitamin D. Um, you know, going for walks keeps your blood sugar stable, all really important for metabolic health. Um, I think I may have mentioned this too, but making sure that you're eating, you know, protein, fat, and fiber at every meal, something that somebody can easily implement to help keep their blood sugar stable, to help keep, um, you know, uh, their metabolism going strong and, and their blood sugar stabilized. And that is also really helpful in metabolic health too. Definitely. Well, it was really good, uh, you know, having this conversation and learning a little bit about Live Health and about kind of the, the advantages of it and, and having that conversation about the current medical system as a whole. And, you know, I think it's so hard to, to have that conversation and not get too down about it. But there are there are some pros to it. it it's definitely a, a, a overall a system that is needed. But there are places that we talked about that could be better, that where they could have increases in, in patient, you know, personalization, increases in all this stuff that we talked about that Live Health does do. And I think that that kind of experience would push someone to be excited about working on their health. Yeah, absolutely. And I just thought of this, but just to go back here for one second, the other thing I recommend people do is first their cellular health, because obviously if you're in good cellular health, you're going to have a better immune system as well. Um, There is something called, and people can look this up if they want to know more, they can book an appointment to learn more, but something called um, autophagy. Have you heard of that before? I have, yes. Yeah, so so that can be induced by fasting, but there is also a supplement on the market called spermidine that can help induce um, autophagy, which basically means it's going to help get rid of senescent cells in your body. Senescent cells means that they're damaged or old and not working cells. Um, and if they stay in your body too long and they're not removed, they can cause your cellular health to get worse. And so we always want to recycle those senescent cells for, and make new ones. And in order to do that, we can do that through intermittent fasting. And there's also a supplement on the market, again, not medical advice, but just something people can look into called spermidine. And that can help induce the um, autophagy and can help keep you in better cellular health as well. So I forgot about that big one and I wanted to add it in there. But yeah, if anybody wants to learn more about what we do and how we can help them reach their goals and um, you know, anti-aging and longevity stuff, feel free to reach out. 
I do like to point out that fasting is not for everybody. Most of the studies done on fasting are done on men. And one thing we do know is that fasting for too long of a period can be tough on female hormones. So for a lot of my specific patients, I like to have them cycle with fasting. So maybe they do 12 weeks of fasting and then they take eight to 12 weeks off. Um, you know, so, and that's why sometimes supplementation like spermidine can induce that same uh, um, autophagy and you don't have to fast for it. So again, there's so many things out there, but Google's not always reliable. So definitely talk to a specialist and expert like ourselves that live and breathe this and can really guide you, you know, to your, to your goals. Definitely. Like I said, thanks for, for coming on tonight and joining me here. It was really good to get to talk to you and learn about what you do and learn about what Live Health is and what they do and the advantage there. I think it's a, a great thing that, that's going on. Yeah, thank you so much for having me and look forward to future recordings. Absolutely. You definitely have to hop back on here and, and just talk more in depth on things like immunity, things like fasting and autophagy. And, and I think that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, if any of our listeners have any specific topics they want to learn about, I'd love to come back on and get more in-depth about those things. So, yeah, just let me know. Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to put this thing out there and, and, and really spread the word of, of uh, Live Health and get people excited about taking care of themselves. Yes, absolutely. Let's increase your health span and your lifespan. And that is the episode. Really good conversation there with Julia about the medical system, about what Live Health does. and kind of the live health advantages, if you will, and and trying not to make it a, a commercial, but but really trying to compare it to the current medical system. And, and we all know that it could be better. And live health does some things, does a lot of things that make it better, make that experience better. So I hope you pick something up. And if you want to support the podcast and you want to, you know, really start taking care of yourself on a whole nother level, you know, check out the link below or the link in the description to live health. It's something worth looking into at the at the bare minimum. Look into it. See how it may fit into your life. It's it's really accessible and it's something that I think makes the medical experience and in health more exciting and, and something more in your control. So with that being said, that is it for this episode. I hope you uh you know you can pull something from it and then Really go out and act on on what you learn from the weight room. That's what it's all about, making uh, making those changes within your life. So until next time, have a great one, and I'm out.